Welcome guys to another Starfield video. In this one, I'm going to break down all of the traits for you and discuss their pros and cons so you can make the best decision when it comes to creating your character. But before we begin, let's talk a bit about traits. There are 17 traits in Starfield and you can choose up to 3 of them. All traits come with their pros and cons, so it is important to choose them wisely. Don't worry though, I'm here to help. So buckle up and let's create the perfect character. The first trait on the list is Alien DNA, and I actually picked this one up myself, as I thought it sounded pretty good. But I'll tell you in a moment why it isn't. If you select this trait, your health and endurance will be boosted, but on the flip side, it makes your healing and food items less effective. Now at first, I thought we'd be able to replenish our health naturally over time, like we do in Skyrim, but it is in fact like Fallout, and for your health to recover, you will need to rely heavily on those healing items. So in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have gone for this one at all, as I've been popping plenty of those med packs, and I'm sure you will too. The next trait is Dream Home, which is another trait I picked. With this one, you get a luxurious, customizable house on a peaceful planet, but it does come with a hefty 125,000 credit mortgage, which you can either pay in full or you can just pay 500 credits each week. I mean, it's pretty cool and it's nice and spacious, and the reason I went for it is that I've enjoyed Bethesda's player homes in the past, especially in Skyrim. This one is no different, and it's designed very well, but you can get many other homes in most of the major cities. So if you're worried about your loot hoarding obsession, like I was, you can just store all your stuff there and even your own ship for that matter, as it has its own storage. If you're planning on exploring the vast reaches of space with a companion, then you definitely want to consider the Empath trait. It gives you a temporary boost in combat effectiveness when you perform actions that your companion likes. But be careful, because on the flip side, if you do something your companion isn't too happy about, it can have the opposite effect, which reduces your combat effectiveness. So straight away, this will obviously be useful if you're going to run with a companion. But if not, then you won't need it. But what I will say is after experiencing the vast emptiness of space myself, it can get quite lonely out there. So having a companion around is quite nice, not to mention their extra firepower. In the beginning, you probably won't know what your companion likes and dislikes, so you may upset them quite a bit and get the debuff. But as you get to know them and understand them, you should start getting the buff a lot more often. So if you are going for this trait, it's probably wise to choose a companion that closely aligns with your character. Because for instance, you don't want to team up with a companion companion who has good morals when all you do is steal all the time. You'll probably put them on edge. Another great trait that goes along really well with the empath trait is the extrovert trait, as it helps you conserve your oxygen when you're out adventuring with your human companions. And if you don't know, oxygen in Starfield basically functions like stamina in previous Bethesda games, and the more oxygen you have, the more you can exert yourself through sprinting and jumping. So with the extrovert trait, it's a win-win. You get a companion at your side with extra firepower and they give you a boost to your oxygen. If you combine it with the empath trait, you can receive two easy buffs just by spending time with your human companions. However, if you don't plan on having a companion, taking this trait means that you use more oxygen when adventuring alone. So it's important to consider what type of adventure you're planning and whether you'll be accompanied by a human companion or not. Now these next three traits come from factions and they are the Freestar Collective Settler, Neon Street Rat, and United Colonies Native Traits. They are all great choices, because they give you unique dialogue options and better rewards from certain missions associated with these factions. However, it's important to keep in mind that choosing one of these traits will increase your crime bounty towards other factions. This means that if you engage in activities that are seen as hostile or aggressive towards other factions, your reputation with them will decrease even faster than normal. So choosing one of these factions really comes down to which faction you fancy doing missions for the most. But to be honest, I would avoid going for any of these specific traits in your first playthrough as it kind of locks you into that faction and you want to get a feel for how the factions are. But if you have done your research and like the sound of a specific faction more than the others, you may as well pick up their trait so you can score some sweet loot along the way. And now we have some cool religious 
Traits, Ray's Enlightened and Ray's Universal. They both give you access to a special chest filled with items, but unfortunately you can only choose one at a time. Now I don't actually know what these chests contain myself as I didn't pick a religious trait, but I'd only be tempted to go for one of these traits if say the chest had legendary gear. Because if it just contains standard low level loot, then it's pretty pointless, as you'll pick up better gear quite quickly. But one question I do have is, if you don't go for any of these religious traits, can you still get access to both of these chests? If anyone knows the answer to that question, please let me know in the comments. Regardless, this decision again is a personal preference, and it's up to you. If you can't wait to explore every single planet in Starfield, and you'll love the Serpent's Embrace trait. This is another religious trait that gives you a temporary boost to your health and endurance every time you grav jump. However, if you stop jumping regularly, your health and endurance will decrease. So this was the third trait that I went for, but it hasn't gone to plan so far because I can't help but search each planet thoroughly before setting off again, which is constantly giving me the debuff. There's just so much to explore in every area, and if you're like me and you like to take your time, then you won't find this trait as useful. On the other hand, if you love space and exploring, then you definitely want this one. If you've played Oblivion, then you may be familiar with the adoring fan. And now he's back again to annoy us in Starfield. The hero worship trait is a bit of a joke trait to have really, but there aren't actually any downsides to having him, and he essentially acts as an additional companion that you can have. But if he does annoy you too much, you can just send him off to one of your outposts, or tell him to leave your service. But he isn't all that bad, because as a companion he can carry your loot, and since he's skilled in weight lifting, he can carry even more. Also, because he loves you so much, he literally doesn't care what you do, making this trait a great trait to have with the empath trait, as you can't upset him. So if you can tolerate him and his cheesy lines, then this one is a good choice. But if you do decide to have the adoring fan, or any human companion for that matter, then you definitely want to avoid the introvert trait. This one increases your endurance when you're adventuring alone, but decreases it when you're with other human companions. Like extrovert, this is pretty self-explanatory, and is only really useful if you're running solo. But there is actually one instance where this trait is useful, and that's for non-human companions, like the robot Vasco for example. We should still keep our endurance buff with him, and there are probably many other non-human companions out there, especially with all the alien life. So this trait trait isn't actually all that bad, when you come to think of it. And I think a non-human team behind you would be pretty badass to be fair. What do you guys think? The next trait is kid stuff, and with this one you have your own parents, which is pretty crazy, but you do have to give them 2% of your credits each week. This isn't as bad as it seems though, because firstly that's not much credits, and secondly your parents can actually give you gifts that more than make up for this small price to pay. These gifts can range from weapons to gear to even whole ships, and even if they are useless to you, you can just sell them on behind their back. I know it's not really a good thing to do, but it's basically a return on investment, and is a pretty neat way to earn some extra credits on the side throughout your playthrough. The next two traits are spaced and terra firma, with spaced increasing your health and oxygen when in space, but decreasing these values on the surface. Terra firma on the other hand has the opposite effect, and increases your health and oxygen when on the surface, but decreases these values out in space. I've played a good number of hours of Starfield now, and to be honest I've actually barely been in space, and I've spent way more time on the surface of planets. Yeah I've had the odd dogfight with some other ships here and there, and I've boarded them and be on some other man-made space structures, but that's about it. Will this change in the future? It may well do, but I much prefer exploring planets than I do space at the moment. But that may be because I haven't got the best ship yet, so when that improves maybe I'll spend more time out there. But I still can't see myself spending more time in space than on planets, and for that reason I think the terra firma trait is the better option. Now this may be different for you, so wherever you think you'll spend the most time, you definitely should consider either one of these traits. With the taskmaster trait, if you have your crew trained in a certain ship system, that system will automatically repair itself to full health, whenever it is damaged below 50%. However, all crew cost 
twice as much to hire. Now this one for me is a bit of a double edged sword, because while it could save you, dropping below 50% is still quite a lot of health, so you might just be fine without it. What would have sold this though, is if the health was say 25%, because you know for sure that this is a pretty dangerous situation, and recovering your health is a big priority. Like I wouldn't mind paying my crew in a hairy situation like that, but because it's 50%, it's a difficult choice. I mean, credits aren't exactly hard to earn in Starfield, so that's another thing. But what should really determine whether you get this trait or not is how much you enjoy space combat, and if you spend a lot of time in your ship. Also, if you're not too good when it comes to aircraft games in general, then I'd probably say get it. But one trait you should definitely get is wanted, as armed mercenaries will show up and try to kill you, but being cornered when your health is low means you do extra damage. Now I personally don't think these armed mercenaries are even a bad thing, because if they do show up, you just kill them and then you get some free loot. It's a win-win, and having the extra damage when your health is low might just help you kill the enemy before they kill you. So there we have it, that is all the trait in Starfield broken down for you. As I learn more about this awesome game, I'll be sure to share it all with you, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. But before you go, what are your favourite traits? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, for this has been the Welsh Wizard, and I shall see you all in the next one.